Yes, we are live. Awesome, we are live. Awesome. This is very cool for me. Welcome, everybody, all of you uh, uh, who have decided to spend a Tuesday evening with 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 me um, talking about writing. I'm. Uh, this is going to be real weird for me, and this we're it's kind of a experiment in progress type of thing. So um, bear with us, uh, and especially me, as I figure out um, how I'm going to make all this work and be brilliant in front of you so we can make your writing better. Um, and um, <laughs> because I, normally when I do this, I'm used to a room full of people that I'm talking to so I can gauge reactions and everything like that. And the only person I have in the room with me right now is my my buddy Cody. And Howdy. he's he's producing and he's going to be... Um, making sure everybody in the chat channel behaves. And um, yeah, so that's that. Welcome everybody. Um, for those of you who are new subscribers to my Twitch channel, um, after I started making the announcements of this event, thank you so very much. Um, and so we're gonna get going. Um, as some things that are gonna happen as we go on, we're gonna have a re sort of a reward thing where we're, you're going to get points. Uh, we don't know what we're going to call the points yet. And then you'll be able to exchange them for things like ebooks or writing lessons or individual stories for you, stuff like that. Um, we're still going to, we're, we're, I'm figuring those out, brainstorming. So if you guys have anything like ideas about rewards that you would like, to be able to exchange points for, uh, let me know, um, ta uh, tag me on my social media, w whether it's Twitch or Facebook or, or Instagram, which are the ones that I'm on. And that's that. Also, as we go on any kind of writing topics that you guys want to know about, or you want me to go into, feel free to mention, uh, uh, post on my wall or tag me on Twitter or whatever. And I will look at that tonight since this is the first of our classes of the Gallo Class Live, um, we're gonna talk about beginnings. Um, because everybody talks about like, you've gotta grab the reader. That's the thing that every, you gotta hook the reader, especially when they're talking about sending it to an editor or an agent, hook the reader, hook the reader, hook them and get them involved in, this, in your story. The thing that they never really go into is actually how to do that. There, there's sort of, I've seen lots of different vague things about, you know, oh, make it active, make it vivid. And that's still really vague and not terribly helpful. Also, uh, before we get into the meat of the lesson, if you guys have any questions um, about anything that I'm talking about, feel free to bring those up in the chat channel. Uh, if I don't notice it, because I can kind of see it over to my side, but I'm just sort of riffing right now, Cody will let me know, and I'll take a look at it, and I'll be able to answer it pretty much in real time. So um, I think one of the best bits of advice that I've ever heard about openings comes from a poet named Richard Hugo. And if anybody's ever been to one of my classes before or, ta or talk to me online about it or um, a panel at a convention, you've heard me say this before. It's begin in an experience, real or imagined. People, for the most part, people read stories to experience something. They want to live vicariously through a character. So what we want to do is in our opening, we want to give them some kind of experience. In our first sentence, that's the key right there, the first sentence. And everybody says, oh, grab them real good, make it good. And But I'm going to kind of deconstruct how to do that. Um, I have a stack of books next to me, but one of the best opening sentences I've ever read comes from a novel by Jeff Carlson called Plague Year. And that opening sentence is, they ate Jorgensen first. They ate Jorgensen first. Now there's a couple of reasons why I really love this. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna deconstruct this for you guys. First, 
it is a declarative sentence speaking with a voice of authority. It doesn't mess around. It gives us a couple of facts. So what the there's a couple of different things in here that make this really powerful that makes us want to keep going is first they multiple people ate Jorgensen a very specific person first which then implies they they have eaten more than just Jorgensen and I really like, so it's this sort of amorphous, the they is really neat. I like that as the opening because what it does is it, it, it implies sort of this absolved group innocence because it's not a list of names of who's in this, the they. So then we get to explore further to find out who this group of individuals is or animals, or whatever. I'll let you guys go and pick up that book and so you can find out for your, themselves. But they ate Jorgensen, and adding that gives an identity. We don't have a whole bunch of, we don't have a whole lot of details about who Jorgensen was before this consumption. And then first, which means, oh God, they, whoever they were, have eaten more people than just Jorgensen. I love it. It's such a great opening line, especially for um, purposes of teaching teaching about opening lines. There's so much in that that just even boom, boom, boom. For because look at how much information I've just given you just off of they ate Jorgensen first. Four lines, brilliant opening sentence. Okay, I have a stack of books, and we're going to go through each one of these, and I'm going to give you some ideas on um, why and how each of these work. So the first one on my stack is um, My Life with the Lincolns by Gail Brandeis. Uh, Gail was one of my teachers in my MFA program, um, brilliant teacher, brilliant writer. The opening of this YA novel is My Dad used to be Abraham Lincoln. Again, my dad used to be Abraham Lincoln. And I didn't know much about what was going in here. I, I read this because I like my teacher and everything. And for me, reading is a contact sport. Is And so I'm going to show you right here. Ooh, there. I, I actually write in books. I know that's going to freak some of you out, but I write in books, and the thing I wrote is like, what a great first sentence. Oh, and then I keep going, and it's like, oh, this is so good. So my dad used to be Abraham Lincoln. The cool thing about this is it's my dad, so it's somebody telling, kind of telling a story about somebody else. So I'm, we're getting sort of a Holmes Watson vibe here used to be is that they used to be something and now they are something different and then we have abraham lincoln now there's that's charged abraham lincoln so her dad used to be abraham lincoln so what we're getting in this is who is he now and there's all sorts of was he really abraham lincoln but because he's kind of dead um spoiler alert lincoln gets shot in the head I know. So there's all sort. <laughs> what well, it's super. This is all supercharged here, and the, and and we've got um, six words right there, which brings up a whole bunch of questions. Um, love that, and then so we want to find out who this who is talking about the the dad. We want to find out about that. We want to find out about what the relationship is, as how the dad used to be Abraham Lincoln and and how factual this narrator is. And the whole book kind of goes through and answers all of that. All right. The next we have David Gerald. Um, if you guys don't know who David Gerald is, if you're into Star Trek at all, David Gerald wrote the, the episode for classic Star Trek, The Trouble with Tribbles. Um, and he is a fantastic fiction writer. So we're going to go into 13, 14, 15 o'clock. And the, th this one's a little weird because it doesn't actually have a whole lot of sentence breaks. 
It's kind of a stream of consciousness. So I'm going to just go through the first two phrases as the opening sentence, even though there's a whole paragraph without any per periods. Um, so this is 13 o'clock on a thirsty night, dry and windy after midnight. And the interesting part about this is Another interesting thing is that the 13 right there, it doesn't have a, ooh, there we go, I'll get used to that. It doesn't have a capital. So we're playing with form, we're playing with voice. It's very interesting. 13 o'clock, is that one o'clock? Are we, are we in some weird alternate uh, reality where they actually have 13 on the clock on a thirsty night? Okay, that's interesting. Dry and windy after midnight. It's almost a kind of poetry that kind of sucks me in and makes me want to learn about this story and who this narrator is going to be and what's going on. And it's, it's, this is far more mysterious than our previous examples because in this, David Gerald is going through the whole story as a kind of stream of consciousness as the character is going back and forth through memory and real experience, and he sets up the expectation that this is going to be kind of a surrealistic experience. And that's the other thing that a um, good opening line does, your opening is going to set up the expectation for the reader, is you don't wanna do just a shock opening and then go on to some other tangent you want to set it up so that this is, here's what's going to, here's, I'm giving you this opening, I'm drawing you into my the world of this story, and I'm setting you up to understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, so the next one we have is from the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. Um, won a Hugo Award. The sequels, both of them, also won Hugo Awards. Um, uh this is a great opening line. Also, I hope none of these authors come after me because I actually didn't get permission to use them, but I'm pretty sure they'll be all right. Um, I loved this. I've read this book twice. The opening sentence is, let's start with the end of the world. Why don't we? Oh, there's so much. That, so, so, and yeah, spoiler alert, this kind of does deal with the end of the world again. Um, so let's start. We're starting. Okay, we're starting. We're getting going with the end of the world. Wait, we're starting with the end? That immediately makes me curious. There's like, okay, how is the world going to end? What, is the, what does this mean? Are there going to be survivors? I hope there are going to be survivors or this is going to be a really boring story. And then, why don't we? Totally conversational. Just like, oh, yeah, let's, let's go with the end of the world, shall we? And, um, and that kind of sets us up for what all the, the horrible things and everything that comes back from this. But it also sets up because there's, uh, Jemison is doing, does some really interesting things with, um, with point of view. There's a second person point of view that runs through perspective that runs through the whole thing that's really fascinating and um but i really like that as it's just like hey we're gonna s start with the end of the world why don't we and here we go we're off and running um so then the next two disclaimer <laughs> shameless because they're mine i wrote them um so they're the really good. oh thank you cody <laughs> Okay, the first one is um, Deadweight the Tombs, um, first installment of my uh, serialized novel about the United States at war with the fairy of Irish mythology, and it starts. Max blinked at the uh, Max blinked down at the metal blade sticking out of his chest, just to the left of his sternum. Talk about beginning in an experience. You have this guy Max. And he's looking down, and there's this blade sticking out. Now the the, so that's an, that's pretty charged in of itself. 
but I'm so specific that it's to the left of his sternum, which is right around where this major organ is. And then we're off and running in the story. Um, so hopefully my intention with that is to get people going, oh my God, what's going on? I got to go on. And the whole series is kind of like moments like that where it's like there's this charged thing that just suddenly happens out of nowhere. Um, and then the last one I have, this right here, for those of you who've been paying attention on my social media, for those of you who are new, um, my project this year is called the Nine Tenths Project. It's a on my Patreon. Anybody can read. You don't need to be a subscriber to go check it out. Is the Nine Tenths Project, and I'm writing in in the journal. One, it's being told one um, one installment a day. It's get posted every day at noon, and um, so it'll be through. It's an arc that'll go through the whole year. The f and it plays with language and voice and form. The very first sentence is, we has words. And I'm going to show it up so you can see there. Whoop, boom. I'm playing with spelling and, uh, and voice. And the reason I'm doing that is because I can't tell you. Um, spoilers, and I, I won't spoil it for anybody, but I'm one of the things that I'm really playing with right now is form and voice and and just how to make things a little different in my fiction. Yeah. Very good. But a good question from the chat here. Okay. B. June says, do you recommend starting all chapters like this or just the very beginning of a book or story? That is a fantastic question. Um, yes, with a caveat. We, it's, okay, so here's the, let me think about this for just a second. Um, cause that is that I, cause I want to be able to make sure that I'm answering this really, really well. So let, we're going to back up to, um, where I was talking about opening everything with, uh, with a voice of authority, making it declarative. So since we're, since we're coming in in, we're, since we're working through the middle of a story, I would say yes, that you do want to use this voice of authority. Now, you don't have to be quite as punchy with the, oh my God, what do I keep doing? Because um, people uh, by this time, hopefully people are already invested in your story. Um, but what you want following up in, in follow-up chapters is you've left somebody in... Um, probably with a cliffhanger or with a question or a, oh my God, what's going to happen next? There needs to, you'll need to put in a little bit of a payoff in that opening sentence or opening couple of sentences that gets them going, okay, yes, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm trusting that this thing that I just got left with um, is going to pay off. That, that it's not, oh, that chapter cliffhanger was just kind of this cliffhanger that um, that, that isn't going to do anything. For, it's not going to go anywhere. This is especially important. In, and I'm, oh man, now my brain is going and I'm really glad you asked this question because, um, in fantasy, really in fantasy these days, a lot of times the, um, the, the fad or not the fad, but the current thing is you're going to tell it one chapter in one perspective, person's perspective, and then in the next chapter, you're going to switch to another character's perspective, kind of making people wait for the, the payoff on the sort of cliffhanger or ending of that previous chapter. Starting from this strength air of authority is going to give people the confidence, especially if you're putting them in something else, especially in the opening. Because, And I'll come back to Jemison. In Jemison... Every new chapter is a different perspective. And so, and it can be kind of, jar uh, in those, they're kind of jarring because it's very different, the different perspectives that are in there. Um, and I can't talk too much about it because it would be really spoilery and I don't want to ruin your experience of that book. Um, but so she doesn't, so actually let me go and I'll check out the, um, so then that was the, the, let's start with the end of the world, why don't we? Then we go, um, 
Then we have chapter one. It says, you are she, she is you, you are Essen. Remember question mark. That's the opening. And so I was like, oh, I mean, so then two, the second chapter is the straw is so warm that Damia <clears throat> doesn't want to come out of it. So we're getting very, we're getting different experiences. So, but each is experiential. They're specific and each one is speaking with a voice of authority. And it asks questions. Well, why doesn't Aunt Damia want to come out and what's going on and everything like that? So yes, absolutely. I would say um, for the most part, yes, you absolutely want to take these into considerations with each chapter opening. Um, and um, yeah. That was a great question. Made me made me think. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm trying to think of like really exceptions, and the only exceptions I can think of are if you're trying to be really experimental, and if you're just going for experimental, do what you want, cause play around with it, make it, um, yeah. So, but if you're if you're going for just, unless you're trying to really strive out there, yeah. Every every chapter, do that. Okay, so, um, yeah, I, that's pretty much what I've got. Um, feel free to ask uh, any questions as I think if I have to. Um, um, so we, oh, now, the, uh, yes, okay, so backing up. So those are our first lines, and our first lines draw, so, as we continue with following up on our first lines, because um, the first line can be great, and then the rest of that paragraph or the rest of that page can then kind of make things fall flat. So as we go on with the first paragraph to three paragraphs of our story, we want to do two things. You want to continue to raise um, questions but you also want to give a little bit of payoff on that first sentence. And so um, for this part, I'm only going to use my work because since I, I don't want to, you know, step on other people's toes without having uh, only doing a couple lines. But so I'm going to go back to dead weight. <clears throat> and that first sentence, Max blinked down at the metal, at the metal blade sticking out of his chest just to the left of his sternum. He couldn't tell if it was a sword or spear or, well, did it really matter at this point? Ha, he thought. Point. Good one. He might have laughed if he hadn't been coughing up blood all over his chin at the moment. Or maybe that is laughing when you have something metal sticking through your chest. That shouldn't have been possible. Not with his gray t-shirt on. So I'm answering questions, about. I'm continuing the scene, but I'm also raising new questions in the reader. Why not? And so Max closed his eyes, hoping things would be different when he opened them again. A futile effort, yeah. Dying men will grasp for anything they can to suck wind just a little while longer. So um, for those of you who have read the Deadweight books, if any of you have, if you don't, I wouldn't be offended if you do. Uh, um, you can, it, I'm kind of seeding in the feel for the entire series going into that. I'm answering, I'm, I'm following up on the expectation that I raised with this thing sticking out of him. I'm continuing to go with that. But in doing so, I'm raising more questions. I'm dropping in more seeds. Like, what's with this t-shirt? And, and I'm giving you kind of a perspective over what's going on in this character's brain and everything like that. And then going to back to the nine tenths project, <clears throat> we has words. We writ them down. These no words in head. These no words in mouth. These words what we can keep writ down and keep. We has no words to keep from afore. We can't know if we can keep words in the later, but these words what be in we's hands now. These be we's words. We will take we's words home and show words to we's tribe. 
And that's pretty much the whole of the first installment. And in doing that, I'm creating sort of this, oh, the word, written words are new to whom, whatever. Um, and so the whole part of the whole first arc of this is exploring that new experience for this character. And if you want to read about those, you can go to my Patreon. And and every day at noon, there's a new installment on there. I'm going to put that link up. Ah, hey, Cody, put that link up, please. Yeah, we'll do that. Give me about five seconds. All right, excellent. So um, that's your opening. And then once you have your first, uh, once you, you settle in and you get all of that into your first uh, paragraph or three, then by that point, the reader understands if they want to keep going. Whether it's somebody picking up your book off a bookshelf or it's an agent or an editor, and I guarantee you, by that point, an agent or an editor is absolutely going to know whether they're going to want to keep going or not. There's the Patreon. There's the Patreon. All right. So um, unless any of you guys have any, uh, any questions, um, and men, whoever, who was that that... Cody, that did the, the question about chapters? The question about chapters was from B. June. B. June, that was awesome. Thank you very much for asking that because it made me kind of, that, and that's what I love, uh, why I have the chat going so people can ask us because it makes me kind of reevaluate things that I know about, um, about fiction and, wait, do I really understand that? Okay, let's think about this. So um, we'll give it a, a minute for you guys to, to ask questions or anything like that. that. These were follows and subs during the... All righty. And so um, uh, uh, thank you all, any of you who uh, subscribed leading up to this first class. Um, thank you for subscribing. Um, for today, ah, Auntie Cleo, I know who that is. <laughs> Kuta Marler, I have a feeling I know who that is. <laughs> B. June and M. Fluke. Oh, I know who that is. And then Auntie Cleo, thank you so much for, for subscribing through Twitch Prime. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, um, and again, as we get going, uh, or as we keep going, we'll, we'll have a point system for rewards, which you can exchange for various different things. I'm still kind of figuring out exactly what because I don't want to do the, oh, here's the reward system, and then go, oh, yeah, that's not really working real well. That, that, that's taken away too. And so um, Cody and I are brainstorming about stuff, and um, so we'll figure that out. All right, so um, any other qu any questions? I will, I will stand up here for a couple more minutes um, if anybody has any questions in the chat. Um, also, also, this would be a great time for you guys if you have any specific questions about writing um, uh, of any kind, throw those up in the chat channel so that um, I can go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, do a, I'll totally do a Gallo Class Live on that one. Um, and it can be about writing. It can be about the writing life. It can be about the business of writing. The caveat that I will give about the business of writing is that my experience is very different from a lot of other people's. So take, you know, don't, don't, don't take what I say as a gospel. Um, it can be about lit theory, because I know that there are some people, uh, I know at least one person in the chat is really into lit theory, because that's what we're studying together. And we have it. We got question. one from yeah. iJuggler. How important is it to link chapter endings to the next chapter beginning? And that's a great question. And I'm going to say it's re it's it depends on the individual project. For example, if we go, I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna pick up. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Dresden Files um, because I think that that's gonna be familiar to uh, not because I don't know everybody who's in the channel, but I'm good. Just it it's kind of a staple in fantasy right now for people. Um, to read the Dresden Files, or really any kind of mystery, is the previous chapter, or the 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 chapter you turn, so you turn to the page, ah, think, words, okay. So say you're reading a Dresden Files book, and you open, you turn the page from one chapter to the next, 
immediately Butcher's going to ground you back in Harry's experience, um, which is really kind of easy because it's Harry. Harry has a very distinctive voice, but he's good. But, but because it's a mystery and everything's constantly moving in those, it's going to be. It, he's really working at keeping you down in Harry's experience. What I think is good, and if you're just doing one single perspective through your story, uh, especially of a novel length, that's going to be easier. Now, if you're shifting perspectives back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, that's the trick. So say you have characters A, B, and C, and you have a chapter with character A, a chapter with character B, a chapter with character C, and then you go to character A, you, that's when you really need to start working at tying the end of character A's first chapter to the beginning of ca character A's second chapter. Does that make sense? I think I'm making sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, all right. Cody well, says that drives. That's where it is. And we have another one. We do we have another one from Auntie Cleo. Would you call the narrators in the fifth season unreliable? Ooh. Um, says, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think I juggler was talking about if that makes sense, oh. not the. Hey, uh, but he might be. Um, <sighs> maybe for those of us that don't know, want to give a quick TLDR of the fifth season. Okay, so uh, the too long did not read of the fifth season is there are multiple narrators. Uh, one of the perspectives is second person. One is sort of a weird... Th ah, I ch you know what? Um, I don't know because there's so much weirdness and um, I'm only in the... Um, there's so much weirdness going on with the perspectives and the narration... I don't think we can have that conversation without major spoilers. So um, I am planning uh, for everybody just uh, Auntie Cleo takes uh, is working with me one-on-one -on -one from a literary theory perspective of, of approaching writing. So um, I think what we'll do is when I come down to the, when I come down to the Bay Area and we have our face-to-face -face towards the end of the month, um, that is one of the things that we can talk about. So, um, yeah, if you will. If, oh, OK. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so maybe I'll do a reading as a writer uh, in the in the the Gallo class community. Um, so another this is, a, I think, a good segue. I have an online writing community. If you guys message me on Twitch, email me, send me a. a um, message on a DM or a message on social media. I will send you an invite link to my writing community. There I teach classes. I have a couple of self-paced classes that I do that is just like, hey, here's some material. You go and we'll talk and we'll banter. Uh, every month I do a reading like a writer class. And um, there's a couple new things coming there. And sometimes uh, people post links and we talk about writing and nerding out about stuff like that. Absolutely free to join that. The classes, depending on which class, um, it helps to supplement my income. And um, so now we can do whatever. And I also do one-on-one -on -one private mentoring. Um, so, yeah. All right. Um, last minute, really great doozy of a question. Otherwise... We're going to uh, close down for tonight, and our next episode is in two weeks from tonight, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I hope you guys had a good – I hope this was informative. I hope to uh, see you guys coming back, and um, if you found value for your writing and you think I'm, I'm as smart as I think I am, feel free to tell your friends, and um, so we can to, – and we'll – do neck. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, this is the part that I didn't really think about is how to get Words out of so this. Hard. Words are really hard. Um, so, <laughs> and see you in four weeks at LTU. I will be at LTUE. Um, for any of you that are in the Utah area um, on February 13th in conjunction with LTUE, um, I'm teaching an all day workshop on 
the four steps to engaging fiction, of which experiential is one of them, and it's like an all-day workshop, so we'll go really, really in-depth into that. For those of you in other areas, I'll be doing other workshops um, throughout the year. And, all right, that's it. And um, don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on my various social medias, and let me know if there's anything you guys specifically want to. Oh, wait. Hey, hey, hang around. We got another question. Mangler 5. Um, my writing is extremely stiff sounding. It's bland. How can I make it sound more fluid? All right. So um, that's a doozy of a question for right now. That's an entire <laughs> episode on its own. But um, we're going to I'll take that down, and I will absolutely make that. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll I will, I will absolutely do in the next couple of, in the next couple of episodes, um, I will absolutely do, um, do an episode on, on just prose, on how to play with prose and I'll get some, I'll talk to some of my buddies and make sure that I get permission to use their prose <laughs> in my, in my show. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, um, but one of the things that I will, I will tell you just off the top of my head to give you something to look at, check out poetry, read some poetry. I mean, uh, if nothing else, kind of go to, um, Lewis Carroll, the Jabberwocky, twas brillig in the slithy toves, and I can use this because it's open source. <laughs> Uh, it was brillig in the slithy toves, did gyre and gimble in the wave, all mimsy were the boar groves and the momraths outgrave. And that entire, that entire poem is a story, and it's told with all the wonky language and stuff, but check that out, and that would, and see about playing around with that kind of thing. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys got some good stuff out of this, and we'll see you in two weeks. Good night.